Hey, what's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of News Dose, where I give you all of the latest gaming news. And there's been a lot of speculation that Xbox could be sending their biggest mascot, Master Chief, over to an opposing platform. And this is coming directly from the Halo team, though I'm not yet convinced that it's what many are hoping for. Yeah, there's been a lot of confusion around Halo over the last couple of days. I'll kind of explain why here in just a bit, so stick around and we'll go over all of the latest on that situation. Also, we got some rumors about a big PS4 exclusive coming to new platforms rather soon, and it could be revealed as early as this weekend. So stay tuned for that as well, but it's been a busy Monday, so let's get right into the news starting off with GoldenEye 007. As many of you are probably aware, the nearly completed but cancelled Xbox 360 version of GoldenEye did leak last week online. Yeah, you can actually play this game on PC if you really want to, because it's out there in a playable state. I'm not going to post any videos on my channel for obvious reasons, but considering this is one of the best FPS games ever made, especially during the Nintendo 64 era, there's a lot of excitement for GoldenEye. People have wanted this to be remastered for years and years. It's unfortunate, however, that GoldenEye just never got its official release for the Xbox 360, especially now that we've seen it's practically complete. It's a game that's being lost to time because somebody has stopped this from releasing, and possibly multiple times. It does sound like Rare wanted to bring it to Rare Replay on the Xbox One as well, but again, it just never did happen for unknown reasons. The question now is who keeps stopping a re-release? Obviously, Xbox wanted it to happen and that much is clear. They had this remaster already developed for the Xbox 360, and at the time they were bringing several old Rare games to Xbox, including Perfect Dark, which in many ways was a spiritual successor to GoldenEye. Both are very similar being developed by Rare. The thing is, GoldenEye's licensing is a little messy. Nintendo was the original publisher, and then Activision did a remake on the Nintendo Wii, and of course you had the 007 film rights owners as well. And I think for most people, the writing was kind of already on the wall, but everything is seemingly pointing at Nintendo not allowing this to happen, or at least one of the higher up executives of that time. Some Rare developers did open up through email with Ars Technica about development of the cancelled GoldenEye and said that they were told everyone greenlit a remaster. That's why they went ahead with development. However, they apparently didn't ask the one guy who mattered. This is reportedly an unannounced higher-up executive at Nintendo. We'll likely never know who exactly, but he said something along the lines, there is no way a Nintendo game is coming out on a Microsoft console. And I guess that put an end to a GoldenEye remaster for the Xbox 360. It's unfortunate, but now we know why GoldenEye has yet to be re-released, even though it was in development for the Xbox 360 all those years ago. And for me personally, I don't agree with Nintendo blocking it it's really not that big of a deal. It's not like GoldenEye's moving hardware anymore or anything like that, but I guess it is what it is. Speaking of Rare though, we need to talk about Playtonic Games, the studio behind Ukulele. Personally, I like this studio a lot. They have a lot of the older Rare team over at this studio, and if you all don't already know, I am a big fan of Rare, both new and old. It's actually my favorite studio dating all the way back to the Nintendo 64. I do like though that Playtonic focuses more on their past, while Rare tends to do more new IP. You kinda get the best of both worlds with both of these studios coexisting, and plus Rare has been licensing their games out as of recent. Now so far Playtonic has primarily focused on building spiritual successors for old Rare games. Their first attempt was recreating Banjo-Kazooie, and then the Impossible Lair was more similar to Donkey Kong Country. I personally like both of these games, though Impossible Lair in specific is especially good. Seriously, if you haven't played that game and you like Rare's old work, go check it out. It's absolutely fantastic. What exactly are they working on next though? Well, whatever they are working on, they're already teasing a reveal and it's coming soon. Yeah, if this is a new game, this will be their third in a six year period. That really takes me back to the 90s when they were pumping out high quality game after high quality game. The question now is what will they work on? Something they have mentioned in the past is that ukulele can be used in multiple genres, so they could continue to do more spiritual successors for old rare games, and one that immediately stands out to me is Diddy Kong Racing. To this day, that is my favorite kart racing game. I would be absolutely thrilled if they make a kart racing game inspired by Diddy Kong Racing. 
Now, they have a lot of other games, though, such as Conquer, Jet Force Gemini, Perfect Dark, Battletoads, Killer Instinct, and the list just goes on and on. There's also no guarantee that they will use Ukulele as a mascot for their next game, but really, I'm excited to see whatever they do. Next up, let's talk about E3. One big question that's been on a lot of people's mind is will there be an E3 in 2021? E3 for over a decade was the biggest game event every single year where publishers came together to announce a ton of huge games. It's almost like a gamer's holiday by this point, but it was a no-show in 2020. Publishers ultimately decided to just do their own digital events since they couldn't do a live show. Now though, there's been this looming question, does publishers really need E3? They did fine last year without E3, and there could even be a debate that they did better by themselves. This could be attributed to more people being at home than ever before, but again, these publishers did just fine and they didn't have to pay E3 a ton of money either. Well, the ESA did promise to have a reimagined E3 for 2021, and those plans have now surfaced online today. Right now, they are planning to do a digital E3 from June 15th to the 17th, where they hold multiple two-hour keynotes and have remote playable game demos. So this will be a lot different if publishers do decide to sign on, and that still is a big question. Even before 2020, PlayStation, Activision, and Electronic Arts all opted out of E3. This is for a few different reasons. These publishers technically don't need E3 to advertise their games anymore, and it's also incredibly expensive. Even today, it was being reported that any publisher wanting to attend would have to pay a six-figure sum to appear at E3. That's a lot of money considering that they can just do their own events now, work at their own pace, and they have an, an entire day just for them rather than battling for headlines at E3. Yeah, unfortunately, I'm not sold on the idea that this will convince publishers to do E3 this year. Now, to be absolutely clear, as a fan, I like E3 a lot. Again, it's like a gamer's holiday where just game after game gets announced, but I understand why publishers wouldn't want to do this, and the fact that ESA is trying to charge a six-sum figure could turn publishers off from wanting to do E3 yet again. We'll see what happens with all this, but let me know what you think of E3 and them doing a digital E3 in 2021. Oh, and a big PS4 exclusive might be heading to new platforms rather soon. Final Fantasy VII Remake might finally be officially revealed for other platforms. This was a huge release for the PS4 last year, but it is a timed exclusive. In fact, they were even showing trailers of the PC version at the time, and right on the retail box it said it was a PS4 exclusive until April 10th. This is no big secret or anything like that, but Square Enix hasn't officially announced anything just yet. Well, there is a lot of speculation that we could finally get an official announcement this weekend at a Tokyo concert where the Final Fantasy VII Remake co-director has teased some new information for Final Fantasy VII Remake. The time of this is notable as it's just two months before that timed exclusive deal should be ending. So this could be where we get that official announcement for other platforms. Now keep in mind this is just speculation for the time being, but if they do announce it here, what platform should we expect Final Fantasy VII Remake to come to. And that's where things are really muddy. I think the assumption has always been it will be coming to Xbox and PC, but according to one insider by the name of Catharsis T, claims that the PS5 and PC version will be revealed alongside one another. There was never actually any mention of an Xbox version, but nothing has been confirmed on that front just yet. We'll have to wait and see on that, but I really do hope it comes to all platforms, as I do think that everybody should be able to enjoy this game. I understand the business side of things, but I'm not really a big fan of timed exclusives. With that said, a PlayStation 5 version is certainly welcome. It's a beautiful game, and having a PS5 version could be a big upgrade visually, especially if you played it on the original PS4. Anyways, let's keep an eye on that concert over the weekend, and if anything gets announced, I will surely let you know. Also, Halo has been in the news over the last couple days for several different reasons. The first of which is because of a new job listing that was posted, and check this out. This was for a producer to help develop a new AAA project in the Halo universe. Yeah, immediately that makes it sound like 343 Industries is working on a brand new Halo game, and a big one at that. I mean, Xbox is no strangers to playing around with the Halo franchise. Of course, Halo Wars has been a big title for them, and then you have Halo 3 ODST, and really, they could easily expand further into that universe. A few people today on my Twitter feed was saying that they should make a horror flood type game. That would actually be pretty cool. I like that idea personally, but 
Unfortunately, it was later confirmed that this particular job posting was in fact for Halo Infinite. Apparently, it's just their standard boilerplate language for job listings. So that rumor did get crushed pretty quickly, but I am glad that they got ahead of this rumor. It's nice to get official confirmation like this so quick. With that said, we do know that Halo Infinite is an ongoing game, so they could be hiring for expansions of Halo Infinite. They did already say that Halo Infinite Day 1 content is already finished, and they're just working on polishing the game right now. So maybe they're thinking about some of its expansions as well. Nonetheless, that wasn't the only Halo news over the last few days. Over on Halo Waypoint's blog post, where they talked about upcoming changes for the Master Chief Collection, they teased that the Master Chief Collection may have a new place and way to play. They didn't really say anything else about this, but as you'd expect, this has led to a ton of speculation. What is this new place to play? Is it for the Nintendo Switch? That's been rumored for well over a year by this point, and Xbox has released games for the Switch in the past. So could they do that here with the Master Chief Collection? I don't think that's the case. I'm not going to say no that it won't happen because when it comes to Xbox, you just never really know. They have a way of surprising people with this type of stuff, but I would imagine this has something more to do with xCloud. xCloud is a very important part of Xbox's future, so I do expect them to expand on that, and I think that's probably what they're talking about here. Now, if Nintendo adds xCloud to the Switch, then I think this could absolutely happen, but I'm not sure on that yet. Xbox has added second-party games to the Switch, but outside of Minecraft, they've yet to bring a first-party game. That's a much bigger commitment, and there's also iOS devices. Microsoft has already confirmed that xCloud will come to iOS devices through beta this spring, so if I were to guess, that right there would be what I would expect. Master Chief Collection is available through xCloud, so it would make sense for them to bring that over to iOS as a beta game. I mean, it would be cool to get the Master Chief Collection on the Switch, but I'm currently not convinced that's what this is teasing. The Switch technically is adding cloud-based games such as Hitman 3 and Control, so I mean, you never really know, but we'll have to wait and see. What do you think though? What are they referring to in this mysterious post? On to the topic of the day though, I asked you all if Sega made another console, would you be interested? And 54% of you said no, they should remain third party. I actually expected this would be the outcome and well, I can't understand why. If you're already in an ecosystem, you're not exactly gonna wanna lose games from a big publisher like this. I will say this though, a lot of you seem to want Sega to be acquired. I got multiple responses wanting an Xbox acquisition and even a Nintendo acquisition. Now that would be quite the pair after being bitter rivals throughout the 90s, but you know, I'm a little split on this question. I personally like them as a third party studio and I do think that they do a good job with that. They got several big franchises such as Sonic, Yakuza, and Persona, but a part of me does miss Sega consoles. I really liked the Sega Dreamcast as a kid. I know it was a failure and everything, but I really liked that console. It had some great and unique games like Sonic Adventure 2, Shinmu, Jet Set Radio, and the controller was just absolutely phenomenal. I think Sega offered a very different style console than its competitors, so I was sad seeing them exit the console business, but they've done a great job at making third-party games. Anyways though, that's it for this episode, but if you liked the video, don't forget to bell notification and subscribe button for more content just like this. Also, if you'd like to support the channel through Patreon, thank you for making this content possible. Peace out.